Al says, so if you get accumulation on a shorter time frame, sterling dollar is doing that at the moment of five minute chart. If it then accumulates into larger bars at a price that looks like a meaningful resistance to the left on the same chart, does that increase the odds of reversal? So let me say, if you get accumulation on a short time, accumulation doesn't increase the odds of a reversal. Exhaustion does. Accumulation is usually the beginning part of a trend. And so, again, you know, in this beginning move here, we see four candles that are small, partially because the bears were in control. Let me zoom back a little bit. The bears were in control here. You know, they sold off the 20 MA flag pattern right here. Boom, they sold it. One, two, three, four, five candles in a row. Now we get a piercing line over here, but it's rejected to the upside, communicating there are still some sellers present in the market. But then look what happens. It opens. It doesn't break the low or even match the lows of this. It gets bought up higher. And it keeps doing this for four candles, except here, Doji Candle, it, telling us, okay, there's both players right here on both sides of the market, maybe a rejection here. But this is an accumulation phase. So there's still some sellers in the market, and the buyers are slowly accumulating it here. Once they kind of get past this here, that's when the market really takes off. So that's when the buyers say, okay, we've now managed to rest the control of this. We're getting long. So accumulation, when you see general accumulation, it generally doesn't mean that it's going to reverse. Accumulation generally doesn't that's not the time to be looking for a massive reversal. I tend to be looking for exhaustion or overextension or a climax bar. So hopefully that answers your question. Okay. All right, great. So let's, let's get into this one here. Now, looking back at this one, can you see the difference? Here we had 10 bars. But we didn't see a massive reversal pattern here, did we? We didn't see strong sellers just coming in counter trend immediately and saying, okay, bam, no, we're, we're right here and we're going to stop you in your tracks and we're going to push you back in one big push, in one candle. We didn't see that. We didn't see that. We also didn't see candles going from small to big. We saw big right here, which means they either took up some stops, the sellers gave up, or New players came in and said, okay, we believe this is a, a full-on reversal. We're going to get in. They pushed it. So there's a big push in the middle. But then look what happens the last two candles. It didn't go from big, small, smaller. It went from big, medium, medium. So the speed of the buying and selling remains stable going into the end. If it was unstable, it would either be small, big, bigger, or it would be big, small, smaller but we didn't see any speed change over these last two candles here. Usually when the market reverses, there is a change in the speed of the buying and selling. And this is something I actually talk about in my book. You usually see a massive acceleration or massive deceleration. Acceleration usually means exhaustion or there's a bunch of players coming in the market or massive deceleration. The buyers are in control, but they recognize, shoot, we're coming into a massive resistance level here. Maybe there's a huge option barrier. Maybe it's a round number, whatever. And so they start pulling back positions in advance of the stop sign ahead. So <clears throat> does that make sense that there should be a speed change in the buying or selling going into reversal? Yes, no. It's kind of a, I know we're starting to get some more theoretical concepts here, but does that make sense? Okay, great. When I see no speed change, then to me that generally means continuation. So I didn't really see a speed change here. I just saw the same amount of buying on this candle as it was on this one. And if anything, the bulls weren't really taking any profits because there's very little wick to the top side. So what happens? The market then goes sideways, and my friend on the forum is shorting this because he says, wow, I saw 10 candles. This thing has a high probability reversal because the guy in the book told me. And guess what? They're looking for a two-to-one target, and then they get crushed because there was no exhaustion. There was, you know, and it could have even hit a resistance level. Doesn't matter. It went sideways, consolidated. It even created a pin bar over here, but we had no exhaustion or anything like that. And what happens? The next candle is saying, guess what? This pin bar is not going to work out, and boom, it breaks through. Now, why does this one 
work that much more because it's the largest candle. We see a speed change and we get a very strong counter trend signal on the next bar. So to me, okay, now I'm looking for a reversal. I see this candle, very, very different. Does that, mean, does that make sense? Why this one was a completely different and then we want to be looking for it? Yes, no? I mean, come on. We finally break through this resistance level. We get very strong buying on this candle. The next candle barely makes a new high and then just sells off and depletes, what, 70% of the gains in this candle? Where did all the buyers go that were right here? Where did they go? So to me, now the move is overextended. And then I want to start looking for a reversal, maybe back to the 20 EMA. It actually goes a little bit further than that. It goes way, it retraces all the gains, pretty much. Almost all of them. So I've spent a lot of time kind of unfolding this particular rule. You know, when a trend is more than likely going to reverse from a price action perspective and when it's likely to continue. Do you all feel pretty complete on that in terms of, you know, the consecutive bars, exhaustion, not exhaustion, accumulation? Yes, no? All right, great. I want to show you one more example of this. Let me delete the other chart here. <clears throat> 